You're listening to the Blue Jay Breakdown. Hey, everyone. Welcome in for another episode of Blue Jay Breakdown, where Mike Sauter, myself, and Jacob Bedilla, we're going to talk about the Creighton men's basketball Ooh, team. Boy. and uh, A lot to talk about. The week that was last week was, there's a lot. Like, the Butler loss, uh, the Providence loss in overtime. Just you, we could probably talk for twenty minutes at least on just the end game situation, <laughs> like the last thirty seconds of both of them. But uh, we don't want to do all that. But yeah. it's not great. Yep. And yep. I mean, put it this way: the Butler law, both of them are like not that. At the end of the day, not that big of a deal. But the Butler one is almost an anomaly. Like <laughs> it's you, like you scored ninety nine. The other team shoots couldn't probably do that again if they had to, right? Like shooting wise, but I mean Butler was fifty nine percent from three in the game. That's just not gonna happen, like for them, right? Yeah. So ninety nine, ninety eight in regulation, like that's yeah. It was, and watching it back. Creighton made some mistakes defensively. They could have been a little bit more active at, at times, but there were a lot of contested fadeaways, floaters, hand in the face threes. That's what I mean. They're just, like, they couldn't do this. They couldn't repeat that. If yeah, we haven't seen to. Butler play like that before, and I don't think we'll see him play again. Unfortunately, Creighton just ran into their best offensive game of the season. Um, I, I don't necessarily. I, I didn't come out of that game thinking, "Oh, Creighton's defense is broken," uh, and oh, they figured teams have figured out how to attack them and all that sort of stuff. They hit shots that they hadn't made all year, which that's not a sustainable plan of attack. It's like, oh, let's just shoot out of our minds. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, they followed up with giving up 91. Uh, it was an overtime game, but um, give up 91 to Providence. So yeah. Creighton has given up 190 points in its last two games, uh, which not ideal. It's kind of interesting. Before these last two losses, they were 18th on Kempom. Uh, their their offense was in the high 30s, and their defense was, um, I, I think, in the, the low 20s. And after these two games, they've uh, exactly flipped. Flip, They're yeah. now 22nd in offensive efficiency and 38th in defense, still at 18th overall. So um, kind of a wild swing the, the last week for, for Creighton. It, it hurts because, one, that um, you've got the, the home loss uh, against Butler. Um, now Creighton has lost tw twice like that. At home, yeah, the Villanova game uh, went to overtime where um, offenses kind of fell apart down the stretch, and Villanova made one more shot, and then the Butler game where again just shot out of their minds. It was, it was. I mean, honestly, if you're just a fan of college basketball, that game was a joy to watch. Just mm -hmm. the shot making on display between Creighton, between Butler, Jamil Telfort, uh, career game for him, and Creighton really didn't have an answer for him. Didn't have a good matchup for him. But then Providence didn't really have good matchups for a lot of guys. I mean, he had four guys score 20-plus. Steven Ashworth has been killing it. Yeah, he is 15 of 24 from three in his last yeah. three games. That is probably the biggest um, that like, dude got positive hate. sign that dude of his last stretch. That guy got crushed earlier in the year. Now look. Yeah. It's, <laughs> like, see, that, and that's why we – That's why you don't overreact. Exactly. Yes. Trust the sample size. Yes. Um, trust what he's done in his career, what he showed. And – the process, too. He was getting good looks. Mm. They just weren't going in. Now he's hitting the good looks and making some tough ones in, a, uh, in addition to that. So he's season high, 26 points uh, against Butler, tying uh, Baylor Shireman, who also had a season high, 26 points in that one, had 11 rebounds. Um, Trey Alexander had 22, eight boards, four assists. Ryan Cockburner had 29 rebounds. Um, again, four different guys in uh, w with 20-plus, but they only got four from everybody else. Um, so again, continuing with the short rotation, but um, in, in the end, Butler just made one more play than they did uh, down the stretch. It, it, you just credit to them. Like they, they had guys come in and, and make shots. They hadn't made all season uh, shots that you're kind of, well, we'll live with that. Mm. And those guys made it. So credit to the guys off the, the Butler bench in particular and Telford. Um, so it, it, it does hurt losing that game at home. But unfortunately, it's complicated by what happened next. And uh, again, Creighton's offense looked look to – they uh, shot 51% from the field, 48% from three. 
14 threes is the most they've made in a conference game yet. 14 to 29 from three. Um, just only 12 turnovers, which isn't terrible, but they came at a really bad stretch yeah. and they came in a hurry. And tw- nine of those 12 were turn were steals, live ball turnovers. And Providence scored on almost every single one of them. And that really was the difference in the game. That's what Greg McDermott called out because they came out, they, they were up two at halftime. Uh, and then they came out on fire. Uh, yeah. Baylor Shireman scored, hit his first five shots, scored Crane's first 13 points in the second half. They were scoring yeah, almost every night. single time. If you down, really, yeah. Like, if you just look at the box score, uh, 27, he was yeah. unreal. We'll, we'll get them in a second, but just um, the the efficiency they were scoring with, they should have been able to take control of that game there. And instead, they ended up with a deficit because of the turnovers and the pick sixes mm. and the transition threes. And uh, Providence just got more cracks at scoring, so it didn't matter how much more efficient Creighton was. Uh, it, they just lost that math battle there. And so now you're chasing the rest of the way. And they did get back into it, went back and forth, but um, down the stretch, took the lead, and Devin Carter. Hey, just, man, three dude, was stupid. Made, <laughs> made some ridiculous <laughs> plays this season for them, especially late games. Uh, you remember the, uh, the one in Omaha. Yeah. Uh, he, he sparked them, pulled them within one, and then Trey Alexander fired back and hit a big shot, then shut him down, forced a bad shot from, from Carter, and Crane was able to take control. And this one, Carter took over down the stretch. And uh, Crane had the lead, three-point lead, uh, after a big hit from Ashworth, I think it was. Um, and Carter pulled up from 40 feet from the logo. That was unreal. Knocked it down to tie it and ended up it, – it, talk about Ashworth getting crushed. Uh, like, literally, he got crushed at the end, too. Yeah. Like, floater. They, they yeah, tried to use a foul it. to give. They didn't call it. Threw up a floater. Got crushed before he hit the ground. Didn't call it. They did not call anything all night long, really. Um, and that, that was an unfortunate way for regulation to end. But then in overtime, again, just back and forth, and Carter made, made some huge plays, get, hit a go-ahead three, uh, and then Providence led the rest of the yeah, way. Providence, d- pro- 11 total fouls in a game is like... And one of them wasn't the intentional foul they right. gave at the end of regulation. So that's that was, a, they were trying to... That's a low. 10 real fouls called in 45 minutes. Yeah, it's, it's not... There's no way. Yeah. <laughs> like, so. There's just no way. But... Credit to Providence making the plays down the stretch. You you mentioned Shireman, uh, man. Uh, he had, just look yeah. at the box score. Yeah. You're like, whoa. Twenty seven turn- points. Four turnovers, yeah. but like that's what you get with him, right? So. Twenty seven points, four ten from three, twelve rebounds, and he went into the game needing fourteen points to hit two thousand for his career. Scored seven in the first half, then had a turnover on the first play of the second half. You're like, eh. You think he knew he needed that? <laughs> I think he probably knew. Yeah, it's, he shot on the, their next five possessions, hit, hit, hit his mm-hmm. next five shots, back-to-back threes, then a layup to cross that 2,000-point threshold and just kept going. Um, again, 20 after halftime, hit some huge shots. And so now he is the first Division One men's player to surpass 2,000 career points, 1,000 career men's rebounds. Men's player. Yep, 500 assists and 300 made threes. So, I mean, it's it's like it ultimately doesn't mean anything. It's just kind of a fun statistical fact, but it it illustrates the kind of player he is mm-hmm. and how good he's been throughout his career and all the different ways that he impacts the game. First at South Dakota State and now at Creighton. In this second year, he's elevated his game beyond even what he was at the mid-major level when he was one of the best players in the country at that level. Mm-hmm. Um, so just a credit to him and the work that he's put in to get to this point. Um, and you and I... Both yeah. known him for a while, saw him come up uh, through uh, Aurora there, playing as that sophomore and that's that, that uh, veteran laden team. And dude had the confidence pulling from 25 feet uh, with seniors all over the court, uh, and that confidence has carried him through. He's continued to work hard, continued to expand his game, and now he's one of the best players in the Big East in the country. Um, and Ashworth had foul trouble throughout. Didn't no, only scored two points in the first half. Didn't get a three off. Picked up a third foul early in the second half. Came back in at the 12-minute mark, and in the last uh, in the last 17 minutes of the game, scored 18 points, hit six threes, only missed one of them, um, finished with five assists in, in addition to that. So, like I said, he's been lights out. That's been the biggest positive sign out of the, in these last few games here. Because if you add him uh, and his three-point shooting to what you're getting from Kalkbrenner, who didn't have a great game, um, which is unfortunate again with yeah. Josh Oduru had 32 points, but it took him a ton of shots to do mm-hmm. it. But they, they did make some plays down the stretch, and Creighton's guys weren't able to get stops. Uh, Trey Alexander had a great first half, kind of cooled off in the second half, unfortunately. Um, I think 
the 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 other note notable thing to come out of this is the rotation. Yeah. No Fred King, Isaac Trout played the backup five in the first half, gave Kalkbrenner three and a half minutes of rest. Jason and Green the state afloat. And then with Isaac moving to the five, that opened up backup four minutes. And Jason Green came in and made two huge putbacks, um, really athletic, impressive plays. And then I thought at the end of the half, he made a really good defensive rotation that Providence ended up scoring on anyway because Devin Carter threw up a shot behind <laughs> his head without looking at the basket, and it somehow went in. But I think that's something you can build off of. Mm-hmm. Like th- That was good, good uh, kind of good reps to put on tape for those two, and that might be what we're going to see the rest of the way with those two guys as kind of the backup front court. And if Creighton... I think if Creighton doesn't have those turnovers, that stretch where they fall behind in the second half, we might have seen them a little bit more. Than, but once you, right. once they got in depth, that Max just going to yeah. roll with the, the the veteran guys there to get them back in. I into mean, Fairbella had thir- 34 minutes. Yeah. That's with the foul trouble to Ashworth. Yeah. yeah. He's it's basically at this point, he's going to fill all the extra minutes. And they played those guys down the stretch. And they really, you can, uh, you, I mean, you can throw him and Ashworth out there at the same time. And then sign and Baylor fun. to the four. Yeah. That's kind of what they right. have been doing. But because Mason Miller's been struggling the last yeah, few games, they, they need to they need to either get him back going, they need to get a little uh, – give those backup uh, backup front court guys uh, more of a chance maybe. they they got to find something in that spot uh, and that isn't just playing Farabello 30-plus minutes. Mm-hmm. So th- those are kind of areas that – and then – kind of getting the teeth back on defense and again a lot of this is uh the other team hitting some crazy shots but Creighton also made a lot of mistakes and unfortunately those mistakes ended up being costly because of the way the other teams were shooting so they got a lot back in here um the the road does not get any easier uh well after Saturday they'll they'll host Georgetown at home so like that 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 gets easier but outside of that Every game is going to be a battle the, mm-hmm. the rest of the way. Um, I mean, that Xavier game in Omaha was not was not an easy win. They had to kind of pull it away uh, in that one late uh, for a seven-point win, and now they're going to Xavier. Um, Are they who's staying out there? Better. Do you know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Didn't come back after uh, the Providence game. They're still out there. Sense. So, um, yeah, staying on the road. Going to have to find a way to kind of lock back in and get that teeth back on defense because Xavier's tough. And we mm-hmm. saw the way that they play in transition. They come at you. Uh, they're going to run all game long, run off makes, run off of misses. So um, Crane's got to be to, ready for that. Yeah, Georgetown, you got to find a way to win in Indianapolis against Butler, which is not like the easiest place to play. Yeah, yeah, they've they've struggled at Hinkle in the past, right, and we just saw what, what happened uh, with the the first meeting between the two. Like it's not not yeah. an easy matchup there. We'll see if Butler can. Uh, repeat some of that that same shot making magic they they did not the next time they went out but they gave you kind of battle mm-hmm. um so the big east kind of overall point here the big east is tough Real now hard. creighton has to go out and play well to win these games they, mm-hmm. they they're they're fine for now there's but no layup yeah left. You, you can't let any more of these these home games slip away um like uconn's really you, you can afford to lose to uconn at home but if that would be a huge win for them right. if they could get it to kind of offset some some of these losses. But, um, yeah, they got to take care of business against Georgetown. They got to take care of business against Seton Hall. Uh, and that Marquette game will be big as well. Mm. So, uh, yeah, there are the no easy Villanova games Villanova at the Creighton. end of the regular season at, Vi- at Villanova is all kind of this rivalry-ish yeah. thing. But so, even though Villanova has yeah. playing well. Yeah, but. there's something in every game. Like none of these right. games, uh, unless something out of character happens – None of these games are going to be easy, comfortable games. So Creighton's got to find a way to to kind of f- finish better, close out down the stretch. Now we, we've seen they've got a handful of these lo- uh, close games here. They've got a couple of losses. Or they've got a couple of wins. They've got three losses in these tight ones. Um, so they got to show a little bit of improvement in, in making plays in, in the clutch there or take care of business earlier on the game to where mm-hmm. you don't need a, a last-second shot to win a game or a last-second stop. Right. Um, so that's the focus here for Creighton moving forward is they have to finish strong. Um, they could like if they start letting some of these slip, they could very easily slide their way down in the bubble ca- uh, territory, which um, definitely not what you want. Not um, the plan. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. That is not the plan. <laughs> no, but they're so. very capable. Again, with it, these last two games, I don't think have exposed some huge flaw that every team is going to be able to take advantage of. Right. Um, so it's I think I think you can still feel fine about Crane without feeling comfortable. Like I think they're still mm. good enough to, to yeah, accomplish everything they need to. 
Now they just have to go out and execute. Mm-hmm. And uh, we will talk about that next week after Xavier uh, in, in Georgetown. Uh, but uh, in, in the meantime, go check out Herd at Sports for uh, all our Creighton coverage as well uh, on the Blue Jay Breakdown page. And we will uh, record again next week a- after those games. Heard at Sports Network Production.